Captain Leigh protested, on the other hand, that his action had been dictated by his lack of faith in Spaniards and his firm belief that all Spaniards were pirates to be avoided by every honest seaman who was conscious of inferior strength of armaments. It was a plea that won him no favour with his narrow minded judges. Sir Oliver fervently urged that he was no member of the crew of the Swallow, that he was a gentleman who found himself aboard her very much against his will, being the victim of a villainous piece of trepanning executed by her venal captain. The court heard his plea with respect, and asked to know his name and rank. He was so very indiscreet as to answer truthfully. The result was extremely educative to Sir Oliver. It showed him how systematically conducted was the keeping of the Spanish archives. The court produced documents enabling his judges to recite to him most of that portion of his life that had been spent upon the seas, and many an awkward little circumstance which had slipped his memory long since, which he now recalled, and which certainly was not calculated to make his sentence lighter. Had he not been in the Barbados in such a year? And had he not there captured the galleon, Maria de los Dolores? What was that but an act of villainous piracy? Had he not scuttled a Spanish carack four years ago in the Bay of Funchal? Had he not been with that pirate Hawkins in the affair at San Juan de Ulloa? And so on. Questions poured upon him and engulfed him. He almost regretted that he had given himself the trouble to accept conversion and all that it entailed at the hands of the Brethren of St. Dominic. It began to appear to him that he had but wasted time and escaped the clerical fire to be dangled on a secular rope as an offering to the vengeful gods of outraged Spain. So much, however, was not done. The galleys of the Mediterranean were in urgent need of men at the time, and to this circumstance Sir Oliver, Captain Lee, and some others of the luckless crew of the Swallow owed their lives, though it is to be doubted whether any of them found the matter one for congratulation. Chained each man to a fellow, ankle to ankle, but with a short length of links between, they formed part of a considerable herd of unfortunates, who were driven across Portugal into Spain, and then southward to Cadiz. The last that Sir Oliver saw of Captain Lee was on the morning on which he set out from the reeking Lisbon jail. Thereafter, throughout that weary march, each knew the other to be somewhere in that wretched regiment of galley slaves, but they never came face to face again. In Cadiz, Sir Oliver spent a month in a vast enclosed space that was open to the sky, but nevertheless of an indescribable foulness, a place of filth, disease, and suffering beyond human conception the details of which the curious may seek for himself in my Lord Henry's chronicles. They are too revolting by far to be retailed here. At the end of that month he was one of those picked out by an officer who was manning a galley that was to convey the Infanta to Naples. He owed this to his vigorous constitution, which had successfully withstood the infections of that mephitic place of torments, and to the fine thews which the officer pummeled and felt as though he were acquiring a beast of burden, which, indeed, is precisely what he was doing. The galley 